Hi folks, um, so what we want to do in this video is we want to cover a question based on the topic of oblique drawing. Okay, so you can see here we're given an image, kind of a, a pictorial view of an image of a little clock here. So it says here the elevation and plan of a clock are also shown over. So we've got these and then here's the pictorial of that clock. Now we know uh, from class that uh, oblique drawing is when we have we sket or sorry we draw in the front face of the object as we see it. Okay, so we draw in the elevation as you see it, and then lines are projected back at an angle of forty-five degrees. So the elevation plan of the clock are shown below. The really the reason we kind of need the plan is because what we want to know is the width of the object, and in this case we have a length or sorry a width of thirty-five millimeters. So I'm going to start on my sheet by drawing the elevation here, which is essentially this this line here which is 170 long, and I can see then it has a height of 30, and this line in here is up 10, but you can see it's in 10 as well. Okay, so I'm gonna put in all my lengths, 10, 30, 90, uh, 30, and 10, and then my various heights draw in that object there. So, on my sheet, what I would simply do is start off with a construction line. On that construction line, I'm going to measure distances of, go back to drawing, 170, 10, 30, 90, 30, 10. 10, 30, 90, 30, 10. So pick a start point. I'm going to pick here. I'm going to mark 10 plus the 30. So 10, 30. Then I have 90 from there. Then I have 30 again. And 10 again. If I check that all from the start to finish, it should add up to 170, and you can see there it does. So I'm happy with that. Now, might as well, while I'm at it, heavy in that. So that's the base of the clock. Now that I've got the base of the clock, I'm going to use my red bar here for my construction lines. Do a vertical line, ever so lightly. And then finally, this one. So there's kind of my first lines all gone up there. And what I want to do now is just go back to the drawing of a height of 30, 10. Now you can see here I've got two circles. Now my center point for my circle is on this line here. I have a full circle which is a radius of 30, and then I have a semicircle. You can see here it has a radius of 45. 30, 10, 45. So that's the information I'm going to have to apply to the drawing. So from the side here, I'm going to measure up 30 millimeters. Then I'm going to add on another 10. Now that's slightly faded there just on the drawing, so I'm going to mark from 5 up to 6. So you can see there, 30 millimeters from here up to here, and then another 10 up to there. Now using that as a guide, just do a construction line across there. Likewise over here. And this line should meet at 45 degrees, and it does. Happy with that. I'm happy with that over here. So I'll heavy that in. I'll heavy in this one. That's just the edges of the clock where there's an angles line. Okay. I'll heavy into here. And I'll heavy out here. Okay, so that's that bit. Now, all along this line, I have a center point. Now, I know the distance from there to there is 90. I could bisect it, but what is half of 90? Using simple maths here, half of 90 is 45 millimeters. So right in there is my center point. That point right there by using simple maths is my center point. Now, I'm going to get the semicircle first. So it's going to be a distance from here to here, which is a radius of 45. I'm just going to check that it matches up the other side. Yeah, happy with that. And then I can draw in that. Always check before you draw. Just to make sure of your accuracy. So there's my radius of 45 for the semicircle. I'm going to get my set square now to measure a distance of 30. 0 to 3. And using the same center points because they're concentric. I'm going to put in a full circle. That there would be for the clock face. Okay, 
So there we have it. There is the front face of the object drawn. If you just refer back to the actual question here, I've now drawn that. So what I want to do is I want to make it three-dimensional, where it's going to go back at an angle of 45 degrees, but for a distance of 35 millimeters. So to be able to do that, what you want to do is any definite edges, we could either project all at 45 degrees to the left or 45 degrees to the right. I generally go to the right, so any points that are on the objects, I'm going to go to the right like that, at 45 degrees, to the right like this, to the right like this, I'll also do it here. I'm also going to come over to this side and do the exact same. Now, 35 millimeters was the distance. So, we could use your compass, set it to 35, it's that distance there. And I could mark that on every line from every point. So look, take that distance there. Could do it here like this. Same with this one. Might need to extend a couple of the lines, absolutely fine. Same with this one. There we go. So now that distance is for every one of those. Just extend out this one a little bit further. And now what I want to do is I want to connect those up. So this one here is a heavy line out to that point. Now what you'll notice is the distance out to this point should be the same to this one as it is to this one. So they actually should meet in a straight line if I was to actually connect those across. And you can see that they do. So the one I'm going to heavy in is this portion here. I'm also going to heavy in every line out to that compass mark. Connect these two, then meet at a 45 degree angle, only because this is an angle within a square. When you connect the diagonals within, diagonals within a square, that'll be 45 degrees. Technically, you kind of have that square back here, so that was 45 as well. And this one will go straight down to meet this one. And then finally, here. I've now got that face there. The last little bit, just heavy in this edge back here as well, just for that. The last little bit we can see here is we have a curve, okay? So obviously it makes sense that we would also have a curve at the back. Now, when we have a curve at the back, what we want to do is, wherever the center point was that we got the original curve, essentially the same rules are going to apply to that center point. So that from that center point, we're going to project back at an angle of 45 degrees. I'm going to take the same distance on my compass, just check that it hasn't changed. Yep, yeah, happy with that distance of 35 millimeters from the center, mark it, and essentially all I've done is, I had the original center here, I'm after moving it back at an angle of 45 degrees and 35 millimeters away. So I've essentially just moved that back. Now using this center point, using this new center point now that I've found back here, I'm going to take the larger radius of 45, which I'll just take off my drawing sheet here now, and then using this new found center point, I'm gonna put in that curve. I just want to make sure that it meets up with it, and you can see there it perfectly does. So once again, always check it out before you draw it in. So I'm going to actually heavy in that portion, because you can see it has to match up at this point here. I'm going to heavy in about to there. Now, you can see here, the curve starts to come down in here and almost cut through my original curve. It would not make sense, because what's actually going to happen is those two curves should meet tangentially. So I'm actually going to create a tangent at 45 degrees, like that between the two curves. You can see where they met here. What we want to do then is, that's the portion of the curve that I can heavy in. Now to find technically where they exactly met, I would project perpendicular like that there. That technically will be my point of contact for my tangent, right there. Perpendicular from the center, okay? So there we have it guys, uh, sorry, I should say perpendicular, not from the center, but perpendicular through the center point, but from the tangent. Okay, so there you have it guys, that there is the clock question completed, where we projected our angles back at 45 degrees, and measured a distance of 35 to complete an oblique drawing. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful.